let us be very clear. Hamas breached international law on the 7th of October. Hamas targeted innocent civilians in the most callous and inhumane manner, and their actions have been rightly condemned by right-thinking people across the world. But we should also be very clear. Israel has breached international law, not just on every day since October the 7th, but virtually every single day for decades. Israel occupies Palestinian land against international law. Israel blockades Palestinian territory against international law. Israel builds and expands illegal settlements against international law. Israel enforces an apartheid system that restricts the movements of Palestinians and denies their fundamental rights against international law. And Israel regularly and systematically attacks and kills Palestinian civilians against international law. So the question that must be answered by all of us in political life is this. How does the world respond to flagrant abuses of international law? When it comes to the horrendous war crimes of Hamas, the response was very clear and very consistent. World leaders queued up to say Israel has the right to defend itself. One after another repeated their words, the great and the good, including our government, Israel has the right to defend itself. Repeated in statement after statement, tweet after tweet, despite the full knowledge that those words have become contaminated. The words Israel has the right to defend itself means in practice that Israel takes that right as license to bombard civilians, to bomb schools, hospitals and other civilian infrastructure. And it has now been taken as license to enforce the displacement of one million people from one end of an open air prison to another. To deny food, energy, medical supplies to a besieged civilian population. To actually deny them water. To ensure that children, the sick, the disabled, the elderly will literally die of thirst. Israel has the right to defend itself has now become cover for Israel has the right to commit genocide right in front of our eyes. How come we never hear the words Palestine has the right to defend itself? Not when a humanitarian flotilla bringing essential supplies to Gaza is met with a military assault and the murder by Israel of nine unarmed activists. Not when Palestinians march in peaceful protests against a legal blockade and are met again with a military assault and the murder of 300 of them. Not after the countless bombings of Gaza by Israeli forces. Not even when Israel targeted and murdered four little Palestinian boys playing football on a beach. And not when Palestinians were dragged from their homes and forced to watch as those homes were destroyed to allow for a new illegal Israeli settlements on lands that are clearly defined in international law as part of Palestine. And not after the countless offensive attacks by Israel against the people of Gaza or the West Bank have we or any heard anybody in this house or any Western leader utter the words, Palestine has the right to defend itself. And why not? And by the way, I'm not asking you to say those words. And in fact, it's just as well you don't. Because we all know that the people of Palestine can't defend themselves. Not against one of the most powerful military forces in the, in the world that is backed up by even more powerful military forces. The truth is that the people of Palestine, just like the innocent people of Israel, don't need the international community to tell them that their leaders have the right to inflict more bombings, more pain, more suffering. They need the international community to say stop, to say st release the hostages, to say stop the bombings, the siege, the slaughter. They need the international community to tell Israel to stop the blockade, stop the apartheid, stop the annexation, to stop the genocide. And they need countries, Tanisha, to lead the way. And Ireland should be one of those countries that leads the way. We know colonialism. We know oppression. We know conflict. But we also know conflict resolution. We know peace building. We know nation building. And because of what we know, what our history has taught us, our call tonight must be clear. Immediate, full and unequivocal ceasefires and a decisive international intervention that leads to negotiations and to a lasting and just peace settlement and to at long last to a free, sovereign and independent Palestine.